Hey everybody, this is Kevin from KC Photography and Design Studios. This is my first video and I'm going to take a few minutes to tell you a little bit more about myself before I go any further. I guess I'm a bit of an old dog. I've been taking photographs since the film days, but I never really threw myself into it 100%. I found that as time went by, I got more and more into it, and with the advent of digital and the ability to see your images really, really quickly, I was hooked. I started out shooting a landscape and nature, and eventually moved on to try a little product photography. Always wanted to try something different, in the past few years I've been shooting with live models. First off, I just want to say that I'm not an expert and I don't pretend to be. I like to get better, but I always believe that the best way to learn is by doing. So that's what I'm going to do here. I want to take you along with me, not to try to tell you how you should do things. I guess you could say that this old dog is going to try to learn some new tricks. I'm going to make an assumption that most of you know how to operate your camera. If not, there are plenty of people out there better qualified than me who can show you what you need to know. I will only casually go over the exposure triangle, that being shutter speed, aperture, and ISO, and probably only in regards to what I'm doing at the moment. Again, there are tons of videos out there if you want to get more information. I guess my purpose is for you to follow along, see what I do right, see what I do wrong, and hopefully we can learn together. I'm planning on doing a lot of different kinds of shoots and a lot of experimentation, from smoke photography to water droplets and anything else that I might find interesting. Also, if you have an idea, please put it in the comments and maybe I can try that in a future video. Lately I've also gotten into taking a lot of pictures with my iPhone. I plan on doing some of that as well, checking out different apps for the phone and seeing which ones work and which ones may not. On that note, since I have been taking a lot of pictures lately more on my iPhone than my regular DSLR, I decided I'm going to take a stab at long exposure photography with the iPhone. I did some research and tried to find some apps that could help me with slow shutter on the iPhone, and I came across this app called Slow Shutter Cam. You can download it for the App Store and it's $1.99. Head on over there and check it out. I'll put a link down below in the description. So I'll take a minute to tell you some of the features of the app. Then we'll go outside and try to take some photos of a little pond I have in my front yard with the fountain and see what happens. The app has three basic modes of shooting. The first is motion blur. What that does is basically what the shutter priority mode does on your DSLR. The effect of long exposure in this mode makes anything that is moving in your image have a nice smooth blur like this image. That is what I'm going to try this time. The second mode is light trail mode. It allows you to show trails of light from moving objects such as car lights like this image shown here. The final mode is low light mode. This is for when you don't have a lot of available light. With it, you can keep anything that is not moving in the frame nice and sharp by leaving the shutter open longer. In future videos, I may explore the other two modes, but for this I'm going to concentrate on the motion blur mode. So let's go take our equipment outside, set it up by the pond, and see what kind of effects we can get from this application. It's important that there's no camera shake, which can cause the whole image to be blurred, and this holds true on a DSLR as well as this app. I'm going to use a tripod and I'm going to trigger the exposure on my phone by using the headphones that came with the phone. Using the plus button on the earphones triggers the shutter.
Now that I've got all my images, I need to get them onto my desktop computer so I can edit them in Lightroom. In order to do that, I'm going to be using AirDrop. All you need to do is select each photo, tap the icon below, and it will upload the files. It sends the files to your download folder, where they will then be available. All you need to do now is to open Lightroom, go to File, Import, and navigate to your Downloads folder where AirDrop placed the files. Click on the folder, select your images, and then press Import. After the files have been imported, I'm going to go ahead and take them and put them into a collection. I'm going to name this collection Long Exposure of Pond for now. Now that I have the images in Lightroom, I can take a look at what I've got. I tried various settings with the app, from the length of the exposure to the amount of blur to see what each different setting would do. It seems as though the app did a pretty decent job replicating what a DSLR might look like. The water is soft and creamy and it seems like the desired effect was achieved. It looks like I even got some fish trails. Overall, I think the app did a great job and for a couple of bucks you can't really complain. Next time I need to spend a bit more time on composition, but as I said in the beginning, I want you to be able to see what I do right and wrong, so hopefully that we can grow. It's important to know that we all make mistakes and that there's nothing wrong with that. Well, that'll do it for my first video. I hope you've got something out of it and that you check back for future videos. Don't forget to leave a comment and hit that subscribe button. Always keep learning, and we'll see you again.